Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless turning now to another aspect of the war against israel the attack by hamas was only the first phase of a long-term plan by iran to wipe out the jewish state iranian leaders believe israel must be eliminated before the return of an islamic figure known as the mahdi iran has been indoctrinating its fighters throughout the middle east in the belief that Israel is the biggest obstacle to the return of the Mahdi and that there must be an apocalyptic war that destroys both Israel and Jews around the world. Islamic expert Raymond Ibrahim. So the Mahdi, as, as an English speaker would pronounce it, it's really Mahdi, which basically means guided. So he's the guided one or an Islamic understanding he's the rightly guided one. And he takes on different guises depending on which sect of Islam you ask, Sunni or Shia. Sunnis, the majority of the world's Muslims, believe the Mahdi has not yet been born. The Prophet said, Hadith is in Abu Dawood, a man shall come towards the end of times. His name will be my name, and the name of his father will be the name of my father, meaning Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Shia Islam, which is dominated by Iran, teaches that the Mahdi is already alive and has been hiding for over a thousand years. Brother Rashid, a former Muslim, hosts a Christian program for Muslims called Daring Questions. The Shia Muslims, uh, especially the Twelver Shiism, they believe that he is the 12th Imam and he was born around 868. So he just disappeared. He's still alive until today. His age is 1155, if you want to. So he's still living somewhere. And uh, one day he will show himself. Muslims in Iran believe the Mahdi is hiding in this well in the mosque of Jamkaran. Pilgrims peer down the well with flashlights, leave prayer requests for the Mahdi and hope he will reappear. Muslims believe that when the Mahdi returns, he will be accompanied by Jesus, known in Islam as the Prophet Isa, to rid the world of evil. Iranian leaders have seized upon belief in the final battle before the Mahdi's return to motivate its military and allies to fight harder to destroy Israel. And a lot of the you know, Islamic schools or jihadists are being indoctrinated by by Iranian propaganda in, in Mahdiism. And again, it always centers around Israel and attacking and destroying Israel. Some believe in the next phase of its plan to wipe out Israel, Iran might initiate a multi-front attack through its heavily armed proxy armies in Lebanon, Syria, and Iraq. Ibrahim and Brother Rashid say the doctrine of the Mahdi's return means that any attempts by Israel to make peace with the Muslim world will ultimately prove to be futile. Israel is a threat to Muslims to the Mahdi, to the coming of the Mahdi Saudi, they have to be eliminated. There is no no other solution. So I don't think Israel could ever have permanent peace unless Islam were to completely change itself and become not Islam, to be something completely different. And Ibrahim worries that Iran might be willing to use a nuclear weapon against Israel to ensure the return of the Mahdi. What does all this have to do with the Antichrist, the powerful man of sin, in the end times. According to Revelation 6-2 and Daniel 9-27, the Antichrist will pose as a man of peace, ready to set the world right. It is easy to see how the Antichrist, promising a false peace, could be welcomed by a world hungry for a ceasefire along with peace and security. Some may see him as the Mahdi, and others may see him as the Messiah. In fact, Jesus warned that the Antichrist would mimic the true Messiah and be accepted by those who rejected Christ, as we read in John 5.43. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, 
Very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12 For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.